Help. Oh god. Oh fuck. I'm really supposed to have a gun. <laughs> I'm really sp More specifically, once I have a gun, I'm really supposed to know where the gun is. Like, it's really important. <laughs> also, a lot of these previous scenarios have been, like, clear bait in order to, like, make me notice that I don't have a gun, which is really funny. But because I keep not, like, unreasonably discharging a firearm in the middle of a public space and so on, I just haven't even noticed that I don't have a gun for the- for hours and hours. Oh no. Let's try making some other calls, though. I need you to connect me to a civilian, a Sylvie. She may have reported a murder. Of course. What is her number, officer? Kim, didn't guard give you Sylvie's number? Yes, hold on. The lieutenant looks at his notes. The number is 005-1944-298. Received. Hold on, officer. Start slapping a marching rhythm on your thighs. Just make people nervous. Let's wait patiently. We can do it. I'm surprised there wasn't a skill check about whether or not I could wait patiently or not. Maybe there was, and I passed. Lieutenant Kitsuragi slowly begins to tap a little rhythm on his right foot. Quite a lot of time has passed. Officer, she finally returns. I have Sylvie Malaika on the line for, for you. Yes, hello? A female voice greets you up through the static. It sounds like she's a million miles from here. Sylvie, I believe we've met before. This is me, a detective from the Whirling in Rags. Oh, right. She recognized your voice almost instantly. Hello, officer. What can I do for you? You quit your job at the Whirling. Why? You mean, why did I leave the bar? You can hear her tense up on the other side. Honestly, I'm... not really comfortable discussing it with you, sir. Logic. Why not? No, wait, no, it's because he was inappropriate with her. The manager. Alright, I won't push you on this. Are you ever coming back to work? Maybe. I don't know. She seems to relax a little bit. I just know I have to take some time off right now. Have you seen my gun? Please, no, not this again. Everyone saw your cool gun, detective. She sounds beyond exasperated. I showed you my gun? When did it happen? You were trying to impress some people with it. Everyone was eating and she stops hesitantly, not sure if she can continue. And what, what did I do? You were waving it around everyone's face, begging them to describe it. You said it calms you, and then you started making suicide jokes. It got pretty graphic. Jesus Christ. Uh. Stop drinking forever, please. This guy's a real fucking problem. Drama. Oh, those again? I may have been trying to wean you off them. The suicide jokes? Off of what? You know, when you put your gun, your actual gun, on your temple and pretend to shoot your brains out? Off of that, people don't like that. Yeah, seriously. Rhetoric. Hmm, I remember this. You were screaming things like my brains are all over the walls, painting them red. I won't be seeing it, because those are my brains. I can't see without my brains. Very nice visuals there. Okay. I don't know what to say. Me neither. Yes, but uh, what happened to my gun? No idea. All I know is next you were waving around money instead, saying things like big bucks cannot lie and guns can't buy money, but money can always buy guns. It almost looked like you pawned it, but believe me, I did not ask. She sighs. Did I pawn my... Uh, Alright, well at least we'd have an idea of where to look for it. Have you seen my badge? 
Yes, I know who you are. You're a police officer. The law. This exact conversation has happened before. Establishing authority before this young girl seems to have... It seems to have been important to you in the past. Don't go there again. My badge is missing. Have you seen it anywhere? Oh. No, I haven't. Sorry. Composure. Real policemen have uniforms too, by the way. Where's yours? Not my uniform too. God, I should really look into that. Damaged morale. Oh, thank God I'm alive because of the drugs. Thank you, drugs. I mean, skill points. Speaking of which, do I have a point again yet? Alright. Let's just do this real quick before I die again. Thank you. Whew. Why did it say Volition 1? Oh, minus 1 damage. But I did learn a point. I have another skill point? How do I get so many skill points so fast? How many... Am I about to spend my fourth skill point already? Good damn. No, it's gone. Oh, that was the it, it probably was a full diamond, and then it became a hollow diamond once I spent it until it saved, which it now has. Gotcha. Alright. Yeah, let's just get those out of the way before I just instant die. And now I'll never upgrade them again. <laughs> Have you seen my policeman uniform? Yes, you absolutely should. It's awful that you lost it. Yeah. Uniform? I never saw you in any uniform. You had your things on. The disco things. The disco things. I assume she means what I'm wearing right now. Yeah. Do you know how my paperwork ended up in the trash container behind the whirly gig? Well, there's an uncomfortable pause. You tried to jam them down the toilet, sir, clogging it completely. After I had unclogged the toilet and retrieved the paperwork, I threw it out in the trash, thinking you didn't need it. I'm sorry about that. She doesn't sound like she's actually sorry. Anything else, detective? Well, she's perfectly polite, considering how exhausting I've been. Was it you who called the police? No, not me. But why didn't you call? Didn't a corpse behind the workplace bother you? What? Of course it bothered me, but I thought the Union already knew about the corpse. What does the Union have to do with anything? No one calls the police. You can hear her adjust the receiver on her hand. The Union would get angry. What do you mean by that? You know. She seems to be looking for words. What the Union says, goes. People listen to them, and they take care of their own, which is, like, everyone here. Hmm. Wait, Kim. She's speaking the truth? The union is law around here? Legally, no. In reality, yes. He looks around. Martinez is de facto policed by the Dark Workers Union. Tell me, why exactly... Did you let a corpse hang in your own backyard for weeks instead of calling us? I... I didn't want to get in trouble with the others. Authority. Push her further. Show her the error of her ways. That's not one of my good stats, is it? <laughs> oh my god! It's a negative three? <laughs> <laughs> I have the default plus one that everything has to have by default because you can't ever you I don't think you can put anything to zero I have minus two from items and minus two from thoughts. So I'm a negative three uh, Yeah, I'm not listening to my authority. Jesus uh, Or maybe I should ask more I don't know 
Her advice, I mean, authority's advice is bad, though. I see. Don't worry about it. I understand. You do? She sounds relieved. What else can I do you for? Do you know who made the call? No, sorry, I don't. She clears her throat. Not a lot of people have phones around here. Copper thieves take the wires. People don't have the money to, ha to have the cables put in again. They use the union's phone or the one on the coast. Though the union has a phone. There's one further down the coast. Got it. Hmm. So copper thieves steal all the phones. Or all the wires for the phones. Interesting. At least there's that. We have limited chances for the source of the call. That's something. Hmm. It was someone else. The lieutenant makes a note. We'll find them sooner or later. Officer, I just it just might take a while. Add that to the list. Find my gun. For the love of God, find my gun. We're waiting for this to, this number to get run tomorrow. Keep searching for the collar. There's a lot going on here. I have so many objectives simultaneously, I might as well just wander randomly than actually seek out any of the individual objectives because, holy shit. <laughs> They're virtually in every direction, right? It's, what's this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. <laughs> so, to be clear, I walked downstairs, then outside. Then to the backyard, then back outside in front of the house, and then now I'm like across the street a little bit. That's how much actual movement we've made so far, and yet I have 16 quests. <laughs> oh my god! All right, it's a dense, it's a dense, uh, just, it's a dense game. Holy shit! Okay, next question. I don't have any more, so I uh, I think I got everything I need. Thanks. I do hope so. Please don't call me again. Bye. She's ready to hang up. Why does she seem angry with me? Uh. Plus one, Gart asked her out. I don't like this. It cannot be retried. He's probably angry with us because we were the worst for the last, like, three days. Uh, should we check? Knowing, at Gar knowing about Gart gives us an advantage. Weird. Wait, why does she seem angry with you? Success. Ooh. Nat 20, but not. Empathy. Yes. You have obviously done something to upset her at the Whirling in Rags. When she was still working there. Wait, before you go. You're mad at me, right? Tell me, what did I do? I can't remember anything. I'm not mad, it's just... The static size again. You were so drunk and emotional all the time. And then the Skua thing happened. It just made me want to quit. What Skua thing? The stuffed bird. The great skua. You threw it against the wall while screaming fuck that bird and laugh like a maniac. I think you said it had been giving you shit ever since you got here. Bitch bird got she was coming to her. Jesus Christ. Sounds like me alright. Why do I end up screwing everything up? It was a pretty bird. There since I started working and whirling. I really liked her. We called her Scotty. So you're telling me that I was the one that made you want to quit? Yes, obviously. You were the worst client I've ever seen. And I have seen so many assholes in this place. I've had sailors fighting, union guys grabbing my ass, kids stealing booze. Once a guy was glued to the karaoke machine every night for two months. But you, she pauses. Go on, I want to know what I did. Well, you were worse than all of them. Honestly, you were getting borderline aggressive. Everything about 
even about little things like not turning down the volume at 3 a.m. I even liked one of the songs you kept listening on repeat. On repeat. No more. I hate it now. Hold on, which song? We Go On by the OO. She sighs. I can't listen to it anymore. You've turned it into a parody. Sorry. Sorry about the song. The hell with that song? Then there was your room, your project, an experiment to see how bad it can, it can get in there. I tried to send the cleaner, but you wouldn't let me, threatened to make me understand. I had no idea what you meant, and I don't want to know. And then you screamed something about how you're actually a real cool guy and no one understands it. One of the coolest guys there is. The coolest guy in Jamrock. Something about disco, too. I'm sorry. And then... I had to deal with your toilet, the one you clogged with police documents, causing water damage downstairs in the kitchen. I won't even mention you waving your gun around, harassing customers, threatening to sing karaoke, threatening to kill yourself. Okay, I get it. I wasn't a very good tenant. No, you really weren't. You were simply the worst. I'm truly sorry for everything, Sylvie. God, I... I knew I shouldn't have brought it up. Just try not to call me again and let's pretend it never happened. What else did I sing besides the OO? And then push her on guard. No. That stuff's for her to bring up if she wants to bring it up. That is definitely not stuff I should be pressing her about. With guard. And the OO thing is just like not letting the conversation die when it's clearly supposed to be over. Right. Thank you for talking to me. Take care. You hear a sigh of relief on the other end of the radio. Wordless, the call breaks. Then the already familiar voice. Anything else I can help you with, officer? I'm done with the radio for now. 57th, over and out. Her voice disappears into void. What a weird, like, non-private way of handling phones. Having to be like... Having to have somebody else coordinate you being able to talk to people and everything. Tap on the fuel preheater gauge? As you tap on the gauge, the indicator pin jerks as if startled. It's in the large orange sector, indicating the engine is warm. Next to the gauge is a red switch labeled heat. Now, now. That's enough fun with the foldable headlights. I know they're mesmerizing. They're also fragile. They're also fragile. I'm not going to turn it on for you again. Run your fingers over the steering levers. The white suede feels luxurious under the, tu the touch and metal clutch handle. So familiar in your palm. Interfacing. Your fingers waste no time closing around the handle. Clutch disengaged. Release the handle. Clutch drops. Right foot urines for the familiar touch. The accelerator pedal. You have synced with the machine's mechanical circulation. How are you, my friend? The smell of freshly treated leather. The lack of dirt and dust on the dashboard. A neat little brush and the cup holder all seem to be whispering. I'm good. Cherished and cared for in the hands of a tending owner. I'm probably going to put too many points into interfacing. It's just such a bizarre skill to have. The weird grabby touchy skill activating on its own is just such a weird experience. Do I know how to operate this machine? You feel an uninterrupted connection to the mechanics. Wait, does that mean I know how to pilot it? After a while, you realize silence is your only answer. Do what you will with it. What do you mean silence is my only answer? You're me. 
Release the clutch and squeeze it again. Of course, it's only in your head. Of course it is. But it almost feels like the clutch handle is gently squeezing back. Where have you been? Morale critical? Oh, shit. Stop dying. Okay. We're okay. Everything's fine. At the bottom of the sea. What? So strange. The machine is not on the bottom of the sea at all. It's right in front of you. Well kept. Why did it say that? Release the crutch hand. I almost just fucking died. What? Jesus. The handle's pulled back. Somewhere deep inside the drivetrain, the disc is mated to the flywheel again. In the cabin, you see a set of steering levers. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's close the door. All right, do uh, car. You were an adventure. My character's in like free fall to die. It's a little distressing. And how about we poke around our our surroundings a little bit? What is up with this place? She was very helpful. She's like one of the only people I've met so far. I don't have a map yet. Goods from the lorry haphazardly littered the surroundings. So since I don't have a map yet, I don't even have an idea of the scale of this place. Or what to expect. Let's meet this guy that runs the magazine shop, I guess. Uh, welcome to Revachol. Wow. How do I somehow know he's a racist lorry driver? <laughs> Has that come out? Come up before? Announces the rotunda man. The remark isn't addressed at you, it's addressed at Kim. Reaction speed. This man looks like trouble. You might not want to do to get into this right now. Plenty of time later. Oh. He's racist because he's going after my partner. Why are you addressing my partner like that? Don't you welcome to Ravashol me? My grandfather came here from a 3,000-year-old racist isolationist culture, while your ancestors came to this island a mere 300 years ago. Oh. Hmm. Every school of thought and government has failed in this city, but I love it nonetheless. It belongs to me as much as it belongs to you. You tell him. It's men like you who keep Revachol divided, making it that much harder for everyone to climb out of this post-war limbo. Rhetoric. What he means is, fixation on the Revacolian nation makes it harder for Revacol to actually attain self-determination. Limbo. Oh right. He's right. You're undermining our. You're undermining our best shot at, at real self determination. Oh come on, man! I just said welcome to Rivachol. It's a lorry driver thing. I don't think it is. I know exactly what you meant. You think my kind doesn't belong here? That I should watch myself and behave? But you see, I'm an officer of the RCN. It's actually my job to make sure you behave. I would advise you to remember that. Silence. The air between them becomes tense. Your partner needs backup. Now's the moment to shine. Well, I think we all learned something here, smiled the lorryman. I haven't learned anything I didn't know before. The lorryman shakes his head in indignation. The lieutenant exhales and resumes his regular calmness. Now that that's settled, we have, I have a few, a uh, couple of questions. Whatever you say, officers. He waits impassively, cigarettes uh, smoldering between his fingers. What we seem to have seen here today is an example of a microaggression. And in this case, it was the exam. I, I think there's some, there seems to be some sort of ongoing conflict where people like him will tend to have address these people that they don't want in their country by saying that, like, welcome here 
as if to imply like they're visiting and they don't actually belo belong here as much as they do. Like they're tourists, even though he's part of the actual infrastructure of how the government works because he's a, a police officer. And he's in, he's literally in his full uh, attire. They're like, welcome, as if, as, he, as if he's not supposed, as if he's just like coming by and he's also going to leave. Perception. He smells of heavy motor oil and his breath. A high tar content cigarettes. Probably Astro Whites. I can actually go around and show people the mugs and be like, is this your ideology? What was the argument all about? No, we're not supposed to follow up on it. What are you hauling? Not much anymore. I'm here. I'm here to pick up some cargo. But the dock workers are on strike, so it's a sit and wait on your ass situation. What kind of cargo are you supposed to pick up? Apples. Apples is exactly the kind of thing you'd say if you had something to hide. Sounds like a cover story to me. Look, Ace Detective. I come from a long line of lorry men. We got ancient rights and privileges. He loses his patience for explaining it. I'm here to pick up a load of fucking apples, man. Just regular Koshko picked apples. Koshko may be another derogative for a person from Grad, you think. So he seems nice all around. Oh, so they grow apples in Grad? Yep, it's one of your, their main exports. They grow them down south of Yekokata. Beautiful place, got great scenic vistas. In fact, Yekokata is a desolate wasteland whose name literally translates to Zone of Ecological Catastrophe. It features no scenic vistas and supports virtually no plant or animal life. I'm just gonna annoy this guy, cause it's fun. Yekokata is not in the south, and they definitely don't grow apples there. Yeah, says who? It's literally the name. Zone of Ecological Catastrophe. The lorry driver glares at you intently, then shrugs. Then I guess they grow apples somewhere else. You can never really tell with those kojkos. They're everywhere, except at their own homes. Wow, yep. Just in case there was any pretense of him not being racist, which, I mean, they fucking poisoned the well by naming him racist, <laughs> literally, but they keep going in further. You keep saying, you keep saying Koshkos. What does that mean? It means the people living in Grad. Yeah, you know, Gradniks, Gradvolk, those degenerates from Grad. Wow, well, that's just, that's not even, all right. Mm-hmm. It's the death of you. That's just the death of, youth, of the euphemism there. Okay, but why the word Koshko? Because that's what they're all called. Koshko Pijik. Oh, so it's a first name. Ah, it's one of those ones. Okay. Yeah, it's just a, it's just a very common sound that's in their names. Hmm. I can't pronounce that. Slasl Kajl Kajkowix someone. Oh, low self-esteem these guys have. Mind you, they look occidental, but they're not really like us. Wow. Okay, this is happening. Okay, so it's an ethnic slur. Hey, if the name and the description fit by the very grace of nature, who am I to say otherwise? So, can I see the apples? Did you miss the part where I said they weren't here yet? Besides, even if I did have some, uh, if, even if I did have some, I wouldn't go putting my nose in them. He looks at you with a strange glint in his eyes. Relax. 
You've got all you can here. He probably doesn't even know what he's hauling. Even if it is something unsavory. So he'd remain unaccountable. You said something about the privileges and rights of Lorimen. Yeah, they're a big deal. My great-grandfather was a carter, had a royal license and everything. We've tried to hold on to our privileges. And that's a privilege. Sure fucking is. We had a guild and everything. Very ancient, very prestigious. So it's a kind of union? Hell no. It's a guild. Invitation only. Unions work for the rich fucks. They're basically the same. Been trying to fuck us out of our heritage in the name of the prophets. But you can't replace experience. Trusting street thugs with their goods is going to fuck them right up the ass. Mark my words. Generations of practice ain't no laughing matter. We're done for now. Do I have a, any context to want to talk to that guy? Jump Jams, a popular uh, music mag. A glossy mag, the most able-bodied men. This issue hosts top 10 lists. Top 10 lists? Ooh, magnesium. I need that for all the dying I'm doing. Uh, there seems to be a demonstration happening over here. This looks important. Ooh, money. Yay, I almost have one money so far. Oh, something's happening over here. Oh. I feel like I should be worried about this. The lowers probably store fuel here now. Now they store booze. What happens if I approach? What is going on here? That's the front gate. Probably of the place, the, having a demonstration, I guess. You know what, this guy seems safer. Let's talk to this guy. Scab? Oh. Scab? Asks the man with jolly eyes, tilting his head. Call me Manana. <laughs> Uh, is he guarding the side path for scabs? Because they're on strike? Rhetoric. You're hazy with the notion of a scab. It smells like politics, though. Maybe it's got something to do with the flask he reaches for from time to time. Shouldn't I know about this? Rhetoric's a five. You're, I don't know what a scab is. I know what a scab is in real life. It's people... When, when somebody when there's a union on strike and all the workers are, are revolting the idea is that the place has to shut down because it can't have work so they have to negotiate and actually uh, give in to some of the uh, needs of the workers so a scab is somebody who comes in to replace those workers while they're on strike and which uh, damages their their ability to go on strike if they just get replaced while they're on strike either by temporary workers or permanent workers or whatever what exactly is a scab? A kind of a worm, content with mere survival. They come, they want to do our job for shittier pay, screwing over both themselves and us. Everybody loses. Hold on, where'd they all come from? Beats me. Somewhere in the ground, I think. You don't seem to like them much. Gotta be bloody stupid or freaking evil to scab. Or I guess, scared maybe. But scared of what? Of who? He looks at the mass, squinting his eyes as if trying to ascertain what they're scared of. Personally, I'd rather beg than scab. If the gentleman shouting on the street came begging, maybe they'd have gotten something. Nod. Have you tried talking to them? We've explained the matters, but they don't listen. This lot would be reasonable and go home if the big guy wasn't riling them up all the time. I'm not a scab, I'm a cop. I was just messing with you. No his, one's ever seen a cop scab. His smile deepens, his wrinkles even more. 
I was gonna say I might not be very noticeable, but he's very he's clearly wearing a uniform. Imagine you cops going on a strike, but then another cop comes in and says, Let us cop for less money. He chuckles, then realizes <laughs> Speaking of, what brings the RCM here to the wild north? Come to see the strife? I was gonna say, isn't this an area where they essentially have other people that cop for cheaper than us or something? Maybe not for cheaper, but they definitely opted to have their own cops. Oh, he's the troubadour. Yeah. Hey, you're the man in boots at the gates. Kuno said you knew about the armor. Heh. <laughs> he smiles. The little boy did a good did good on his promise. His promise. To get me into trouble. He to sick the pigs on on me. Pardon the choice of words, not mine. What happened? I was asked to look into the armor situation. Official Union probe, you know. Track it down. See who took it. Did you? At first I thought, why not? Maybe the pieces can feed the strike. Buy us a few more days under the sun, you know. So I went to this boy. He said he'll m make me his prison bitch. He's got eyes everywhere, the cops in his pocket, and he's the king of Jamrock. Serves me right for doing menial footwork. I dropped that probe right then and there, and it still got me into trouble. He smiles. One bad move is all it takes. So, Kunos used, Kuno used us, what, to scare you? It's a minor nuisance, it's all good. He contemplated taking a swig from his flask. So the probe in the armor, what'd you learn? I learned that people don't want to talk to a drunk Union man about some armor. What else? Not much. Technical stuff, mostly. That was the interesting part. What sort of technical stuff? I did some research into this armadura. Let's say I have friends at the library. He explains with a wry smile. I didn't get into the material science, just how it comes off. How does it come off? In parts. Four in total. The helmet was the first to go. The kid says he tore it off and kicked it into the sea. I believe him. The boots were still on the guy last I saw. Too hard to remove. So, as, a, as, as I count, there are two parts missing. The gauntlets and the curious. This is where I left off. Too much hassle. More like a job for some militia. Militia. Hold up, four pieces? Helmet, curious, gauntlets, boots. What about the leggings? Oh, they're just gone. They don't exist anymore, if they ever did at all. He gives you a jolly shrug. Forget about them. I did. Are we just acknowledging that there aren't that many equipment parts in the game? I'm ambitious. I'm gonna find all of it. All the pieces. All of it. The lieutenant raises his brow. There are junior officers out there, eager to prove themselves. I would leave some for them, but okay. Let's find all of it. Rhetoric. It's implied he finds it unlikely you will succeed in this. A Mesakis epic, then. All across Martinez. He glances south. Where the canal runs. I hope it'll be a real bonanza for you. Thank you for your cooperation, sir. No problem. He finally takes a swig from the flask. If you see that kid, take him from call me... Uh, thank him from call me Manana. Thank him for showing me the way. What's the strike about, anyway? You know, serious business. He smiles. I'm sure the big boss would be glad to tell you. You'll have to ask him first. 
He's a chatty guy. Wants to talk about the strike too. Just can't break the command structure and tell you now. I've come to Martinez investigating a murder. Murder, huh? Sounds like a lot of hard work. You never see me investigating a murder. It's actually very fun and easy. <laughs> No idea what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, these options. Maybe you want to help me solve it by telling me who did it. Of course, Polizia. He gives you a sly smile. It wasn't B. You can rule me out. Easier that way. He didn't do it. It's the truth. Wow. Thanks, drama skill, for being an instant lie detector that I totally believe is real. <laughs> At least it's one of my good stats. But still, that's really an iffy way to determine pe whether people are telling the truth. I'm looking for assistance with a dead body situation. Body still hanging in that tree? He rubs his chin as if pondering his core beliefs. Ah, that's a rough pickle. Can't help you with that. Sorry. I'm not really an admirer of dead bodies. Might be someone else from the Union can render assistance. He shrugs. Does this mean you can let me through the gate? I don't operate in that capacity. I'm not a grantor of passage. He takes a swig and points up the stairs with his flask. The passage grants itself. If it's all so simple, why don't the strike breakers just go up the stairs? That simple. I just walk in. Aye. Walk right past the measure head and go in. Past measure head? Yeah. The two and a half meter tall Semenese supremacists there. Uh oh. He points to the bridge above the gates. Walk right past him. Oh man. Well, I think we might meet some of these characters later. That guy is covered in markings. And there's just three ladies here. What? They just want to watch? Right. And then press the button to unlock the door. Uh-huh. Then go past him again. Okay. And then you enter the harbor through the, uh, through the east. Uh, through the office. Esta. So you're saying it's actually quite difficult. Don't worry, I'm sure it's not completely impossible. For example, you could best measure hit in a physical confrontation. <laughs> oh no. Or you could convert it to his semi supremacist worldview. Or... Hmm. He strokes his mustache. Maybe it actually is completely impossible. Has anyone ever bested him in physical confrontation? Not yet, no. He fixes his eyes on you, evaluating your prowess. He's incredibly strong. Has any of the has any of the scabs tried converting to his worldview? Jean Luc himself would say the philosophy has proven overtly heroic for the scabs to convert to. Not enough intuition. Got it. Another thing. Sure. The man whistles a jaunty tune, the wind rustling his whiskers. Nice talk. Gotta keep moving. Okay, so yeah, we're probably not getting in that way. Which means that as long as the strike's happening, I might not be able to deal with the body? Not this way. At least not with the dock workers the way that we intended, potentially. Where's the rest of the armor? Kuno lied to you. Kuno, no. You want all the armor pieces. Deck yourself out in full metal battle-hardened glory. NB. This might take a while. Like, a long while. <laughs> Fitting. Alright, well, I have reason to go back to- Saffron Picker, welcome to Revacol. Okay. Jesus. Christ. <laughs> uh, that probably is his mug.
I talked to Manana about your armor. So? He raises his eyebrows, projecting aggressive indifference. He said you're the king of the entire Jamrock? Uh, North Jamrock, he corrects you. Kuno meant everything north of 881. The rooster fucked Kuno's words up. Kuno doesn't do south. Kuno doesn't fuck with the madre. Kuno sent your fat ass running around like jello. Look, pig, he's suddenly all business. Kuno sent you to rough some people up. Kuno played you. That happened. Now you and Kuno should move on. You played me. Nothing happened. I just talked to a guy for a second that was like around the corner. I'll remember this, Kuno. You got fucked, he repeats. You got fucked, pig. Fucked bad. Of course you're going to remember this. Now get the fuck out of here, grief in the Kuno. After this shit, you better have something real interesting to say if you want to say it in Kuno's face. Yeah, real interesting. There, I try again. Oh, legendary failure. What's going on? He's an ungovernable youth on your crime scene, throwing around incendiary language trying to push your buttons. Pain threshold? Like you don't have enough on your plate. You feel a sudden urge of self-pity coming on. Ah, oh, shit. No, stop. No, pain threshold. Don't. Don't self-pity. Kuno, you must have seen all sorts of things throwing stones here. Want to help the RCM bust a murderer? Fuck no! He bursts out loud, laughing. What are you fucking mentally handicapped? Kuno, they've almost made you a snitch now. Ease off, see? Kuno always takes the bullet over the hammer. He nods, big boy style, incredibly proud of himself. <laughs> He'd rather die than work with the justice system. Yep. Kuno doesn't fucking care. Well, that went about as well as you might think. But hey, we have uh, confronted him over the douchiness. Which, you know, wow. I mean, we actually do have like 10 completed quests already. They come and f they come and go quick. Apparently, there's, there's something you can do over there, but if you, you have to get past that fence, which good luck. Good luck. I have no idea how big this world is. We've only barely seen glimpses of it, and I'm trying to be very thorough in that process too. Wait, this is a guy right here. Who the, who are you? Hey, Tommy Laham's got a song in his head. The man mutters to himself, accenting the beats as he goes. A simple little cadence. He seems to be making it up as he goes. I'm the law. Let's keep listening. From another planet. Hey there. What's going on here? It's the jam, my man. He motions towards the sprawl of lorries with a sweeping gesture. Perception. The air from the east is thick with the smell of crude oils, heavy metals, and other byproducts of the modern era. You can almost taste it. What's the jam? It's a traffic jam for the ages. Harbor gates up the street are shut tight, no explanation given. Workers on strike, scabs agitating, an all around clusterfuck. Meanwhile, we're all stuck here in long haul limbo for days upon days upon days. Upon days. He glances south, down the road. How long have you been here? Feels near forever. Like I was born on this here roundabout and this was all I ever knew. Just me and the metal and the tires, the oil and the fumes of mazout. Drama. Mazout is an antiquated term for a heavy fuel oils. This man has barely suppressed performative has a barely suppressed performative streak. Or he just likes unusual words, or both. I 
I dig your style, man. Yeah, imagine. It's been a whole week already. He snickers in appreciation of the digging of his style. So tell me, what do you need? Tell me more about this strike. It's like, whatever goes on over the docks, workers got a blockade set up, making demands. No way in or out. Reaction speed. Going on strike would probably help you dodge a bullet or two. I suppose, yeah, if I didn't work, then I wouldn't get shot at as much, although so far I haven't been shot at. Maybe I should go on strike. What's the union demanding? Some pretty wild stuff I hear. Like a giant new power crane in half the company? I forgot what exactly. Good on them, I guess. I've heard talk there's a company rep in town too, like a strike negotiator type. They'd know what's up, precise demands and so on. Ah, yes, from the Wild Pines. He takes a note. We'll meet her soon enough, I'm sure. What do you think the company wants? They want to keep that money flowing in, my man. He makes a ka-ching sound. Rhetoric. He doesn't blame them, but he's not on their side, that's for sure. Anything else I should know? Anything else, he thinks. Yeah, this ain't really my area of expertise. I just do my job and get paid. I have things to do and places to be. All of us do. All of who? Us lorry drivers. Kamunus. A few still hang around here, waiting for us to... for this mess to end. Most have scurried off somewhere, to get drunk or high or laid. He smiles awkwardly. Not that I blame him, really. Not you? Not my thing. Chasing transient pleasures is a drag these days. I prefer the examined life now. Thinking, reflecting, observing. He glances down the road towards the horizon, a glint of something in his eyes. Wait, this guy likes to hang out and observe, and he's exactly where I've been for the last few days, and he might have been here for the last few days too. He says he's been here a week or something? He might know where my gun is, he might have seen the me, the thing I threw out the window, he might have seen... that. Was that a gun? Uh, no, I probably pawned it off. He might have seen the murder. Hmm. He also seems to be covered in tattoos, like a few other characters are. Maybe he can at, tell me about the tattoos, since he's got tattoos on his neck that look kind of similar-ish, maybe. Composure. He tries his best to look nonchalant, but there's a rigidity in him. As if trying to conceal something warm and deep beneath a cool exterior. Maybe he's smuggling really important cargo that he'll get in deep shit for. Maybe for criminal reasons. <clears throat> and he'll heal all the wrong people something if it goes missing. Know anything about the dead man there? The one hanging behind the hostel there? He ain't one of us drivers, I know that. All accounted for. Otherwise, I haven't really asked about. Been wasting time right there. Keep him busy. Drama. It's easy to see he's telling the truth. He's kept his nose out of the dark stuff. Busy with what? Analyzing the fundamental structure and psychological conditions of being stranded in the midst of a sea of motor lorries and their sad, despondent chauffeurs. Ask for his conclusion. And your conclusion? A sense of surprise, there ain't more bodies hanging from more trees. <laughs> sure. Whoa, my empathy is so bad. Oh. I'm sad about my lack of empathy stat. What are you hauling in what what are you hauling anyway? Oh, high grade narcotics, legal firearms, stuff like that. Relax, he's merely joking. Wicked. I was wanted a friend in the underworld. Ha! Huh. No, I'm joking, my man. He grins. F-A-L-N runs a nice, clean business. This haul of cargo is mostly sporting goods. You know, track suits and that kind of thing. They usually get shipped to Grad and the Occident. Though, we've been making headway in the Il Maran market lately. Got 
Can I get one of those fallen track suits you're, suits you're hauling? We're pals and all, but I can't just freely hand out merchandise. The bosses won't be happy. Wait till they find out that I'm pretty sure uh, Kuno already got one. He seems like he probably stole it since he's trying to sell them. That's usually the shtick is to actually have a supply. That's your machine behind you? This rockin' beauty? He points to the lorry with his thumb. Sure is. Like a rash you can't get rid of. You interested in heavy-duty cargo machinery? Yes, <laughs> says my interfacing stat. Encyclopedia. A motor lorry. Also called a Kaiman. On Kylo and neighboring islands. This one looks roughed up. Enough to be the sort of, of a fallen rust bucket. Maybe an A6? That a fallen A6 you got there? Good eye, my man. Yep. She's an old one, but reliable. She gives the side of the lorry a friendly knock. Me and her spent a long time together. Right, I had another question. The man taps his fingers rhythmically, rhythmically against his arm. What do you see in those eyes? He's into it. Don't go too far. This seems like a personal matter. My man, I want to know about your soul. <laughs> hey, Tommy. Spill the beans. What's troubling you? Man, nothing's troubling me. Just the usual Loriman tropes and hopes. The road and the rhymes. This jam ain't helping either. He looks around. Empathy. That all the beans you got, Tommy? Damn. It really is hard to talk man to man. I'm good for now. Good talk. Don't be a stranger. He gives you a salute with two fingers. Hey, we have a couple of friendly people. Actually, like three friendly people. She was friendly, he was friendly, and the guy, the troubadour, was reasonably friendly. I think the secret is to not know me, and then you might like me, as long as you haven't ever met me before. <laughs>